up guys, this is Jeff Chan from Anime Shredded and I realized I haven't broken down any of my previous fights so I thought I'd start with this one. It's my father's birthday in a few days so I just wanted to commemorate him through this video. I miss you very much and wish you were here. So as you know, fighters try to study their opponents as much as they can going into their fights. At that time, I had asked Lawrence Kenshin to study this opponent and help me game plan. Things turned out exactly the way we planned and I think it's about time I give him the credit he deserves. So we concluded that he was very physically strong, aggressive, and was probably going to rush in at me. We expected him to try and take me to the ground, so the game plan was to keep a wider stance to strengthen my takedown defense as well as stay light on my feet to move away from any double leg shots. Lawrence advised me to stay patient and let my aggressive opponent come to me first. The next thing was to circle to my opponent's left. Basic advice to fighting a southpaw is to circle away from the strong rear hand. In a southpaw versus orthodox matchup, Whoever has their lead leg on the outside has the advantage. Since my opponent was a southpaw, Lawrence advised me to use my lead hand to control my opponent's lead hand and time a straight cross down the middle at the right moment. Coincidentally, one of my favorite tactics against a southpaw is to actually hand trap the lead hand and throw the cross followed by a lead hook. So as it turned out, my opponent eventually came forward. Note that as he's moved in on me, I stepped my lead foot outside of his lead foot to move my head off center line and created a bit of an angle. I remember landing the cross and off-balancing my opponent. I cannot remember if I hit him clean or not, but I knew I hadn't take him, taken him out yet, and that he would continue forward aggressively again to make up for his lost point. So I timed a rear roundhouse kick as he came in, causing double the damage as he collided right into it. Note that again, I stepped my lead foot outside of his lead foot to create a bit of an angle and slipped my head to the left to dodge in case he were to punch, which he did. As I attempted to retract my leg back to stance, my opponent caught my ankle. I anticipated a punch coming from the other hand and kept my lead hand up to the block as I grabbed the neck with my other hand. And to free my leg, I framed off the neck as I pulled my leg out. My opponent was driving forward to take me down, so I stepped 45 degrees to the side and quarter turned by pivoting my lead foot, pulling my rear leg back, and pulling my opponent's head down to the canvas as my lead arm took the underhook for more leverage. Think of a bull rushing forward at the guy with the red cape and the red cape guy just steps out of the way. I landed in side control. I quickly transitioned into knee on belly. It's hard to see here, but I walked my left hand under my opponent's right armpit to trap his arm as I windshield my leg over to mount position. My opponent quickly escaped by pushing my right knee down and regaining half guard. To get from half guard to full mount, I used my left arm to wrap behind my opponent's neck and grab his left shoulder, applying shoulder pressure, forcing my opponent to face the opposite direction. From there, I had to use my free hand to push down on my opponent's left knee to free out my right leg, but he had wrist control. Eventually, I broke free of his wrist control and slipped my right leg out of his half guard and into full mount. My opponent tried to bridge and roll me over, but I shot my right leg underneath his body and flattened him back down. My opponent tries to bridge and roll over again, but instead I let him and transitioned to take his back and he immediately got my hooks in. I tried to flatten him out so he would be belly down on the canvas, but he was too strong. So I posted my lead leg and pulled him back. I had my arm around his neck and tried to finish the choke, but my opponent did a good job at tucking his chin and stopping my other hand from leveraging the rear naked choke. He then rolled onto his knees, belly down again, and I quickly followed behind and flattened him out by vine gripping my legs. This was a perfect position to finish the fight, so I went for the ground and pound, but my opponent turned around to give me mount instead. From here, I dropped an elbow right through his guard. Nope, I don't like mount either, he thought, and he turned onto his knees again, in which I transitioned again and took his back. This time, he got control of my choking arm, and started his back escape by lifting my arm around his head to turn into my guard. I tried to block it by clamping his arm down with my right leg, but I felt he had a very strong grip on my arm and to continue resisting it would just waste my energy. So I set up my arm bar instead as he turned into my guard. As he stepped his left leg up to post for better base and balance, I hooked his left ankle with my right arm and pushed his head down with my left hand and kick my left calf over his head for an armbar. Notice that my toes are pointing up and I was trying to bring my heel to my rear end to clamp down hard. He started to stack me to escape the armbar, 
so I used my right arm to hook his right hamstring and rolled him over to finish the armbar. To finish the armbar, I pinched my two knees together, make sure that his thumbs are pointing the sky as I pull down on the hand and thrust my hips forward. my new course that I put all my time into these last couple of months. It is called the MMA Striker and is designed for MMA fighters focused on keeping their fights standing, just like former UFC champions Conor McGregor, Max Holloway, and Jose Aldo to name a few. This 19 chapter curriculum covers tactics that I believe help the striking focused fighter, going through both the basic and advanced strikes, countering different fighting strategies and styles, important grappling techniques, escaping some of the most dangerous positions if the fight is taken to the ground, and how to stand back up. You guys know me as a coach that strongly believes in passing on techniques that I wholeheartedly believe work in the cage. So everything in the curriculum is backed up with real-time sparring footage. 